Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we are going to discuss an overview of My Time Tabulator. To download this free tool, click the GitHub link in the comments below at any time. And note that it requires you to have Microsoft Access 365 installed. This is a brief overview of the My Time Tabulator tool. It requires Microsoft Access. You download the ACC DB file and then you just double click it and it's up and running. So the first order of business when you open up this app, it'll be empty and you want to set up some properties. So you set up the, your employer name. I put in my little hobby company, your username. I use this for my day job too and I put in my regular employer and I run that separate on the work computer. So I have two instances of my time tabulator running, one for at home after hours, that's what you're looking at here, and one for when I'm in doing my day job. So you enter two properties, you enter any projects you want, whatever you want. So that's projects and then categories, do whatever you want, that's the categories. Uh, You'll see if you go on the GitHub and read all the training documentation, there's some neat links in there to concepts of doing red light, green light, yellow light, orange light, where you take your tasks and categorize them by green light work you should be doing, red light work that you're not supposed to be doing that's really not part of your job description, yellow light stuff you can uh, take and delegate, etc. But read documentation on GitHub, there's some good examples there and uh, links to some good articles. So, you've entered some properties, company name here, your name, you've entered some projects and you can keep adding projects over time and then you've entered some categories. Next, next you enter tasks. So this MCSE certification, it just happens to load that project first and these are the tasks for it. So that's one project and all the tasks under it. If I went to MSDA, that's a graduate program, there's all the classes, blah, 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 and then uh, the data research labs, my little hobby company. There's all the different videos. I track each one, curious how long they take to do. So I have all these things broken out as tasks and entered in, and it's not a big deal. It doesn't take you long. If I want to add a task, I just go down here and type in a name, type in a category, pick from the drop down. Is it closed? Yes or no? Well, it's going to be no when I first start out, and then the project ID gets automatically assigned. So there's really not much to do when you add a new task. You don't want to get too granular and add too many tasks, but you'll, you'll figure out what works for you. So once you've set up this metadata in these tabs up here, then you start doing your day-to-day -day entries. And as the day goes on, as soon as you click something, like if I were to click this and select, I'll hit yes, go pick something, whatever, I'll pick that, it gets added in. Now I'm going to move off of it and say no, because I don't want to save the change. But anyway, you just go through, let's go to today's date. And so it's saying at 10 o'clock, that's an hour for now, that I'll end my day. Um, but anyway, you just enter all your times for tasks. When the task started, military time, 1600 hours, subtract 12. So that'd be 4.50 p.m. And 5.10 p.m. I switched. And 6.20 p.m. I stopped, took a break, did some errands. And then at 8, 20 minus 12, 8 p.m., 8 and 10. I started up again, did about two hours before it was bedtime. And that's how I enter the tasks. Now, why would you do that? Well, here's why. You get a time card, which is handy, so I can see what happened this week. I can go back a week, hit the time card again. I can see what happened in the prior week. If I'm in the office and I really wanted to, I could screenshot this. Uh, if you don't have green shot, you can check out one of the tutorials I have. It's a really cool tool. So just like that, boom, boom, open it up in the image editor, a green shot, pull it over. Green shot's nice. There's green shot. Click this guy, right click this guy, give it a torn edge and a torn edge. There we go. I have a nice little, I can copy that, paste it, email it off. So that's one report you may or may not be interested in. And then there's several other reports. There's a roll up by category. I'm not going to go through filters. You can create all your own filters dynamically, but I'm not going to do that in this overview. The roll up by category, you can run the report, zoom in here a little bit. So after our self-improvement, 1600 hours spanning two, not quite two years, 514 days. That's all of the tasks and all the time rolled up into a couple buckets by category. And you control the categories. You do whatever you want. You can do the red light, green light stuff. I happen to choose this. Doesn't matter. Pick whatever you want for categories. Projects, run the report. 
So the MCSE took me 299 hours across 89 days back in 2019 to get an MCSE certification. The master's degree was 1,200 hours spanning just under a year. And so I, it all rolls up and I know where it went. Now, if, close that, there's a Gantt chart. It's nothing special. It's just the time laid out across the last couple of years. You can do filters and narrow it down, whatever, but then you can see what's the duration, in this case, all the different classes, uh, and how many days were they. So it took 31 hours, 32 hours across six days for a programming in Python two credit class. But a four credit SAS programming class was much harder, 67 days, 181 hours. Let's exit out of there and task by project or category. So we looked at categories up here where it was a roll up, not many lines. And maybe we were curious about the content and the tools. So we could drop down here to the detail, task by category, run that. Popped up on my other screen, bring it back over. And it's on spanning multiple pages here, but uh, yeah, we don't care about that. That's after hours self-improvement. We were concerned about the content, so the DRL Labs content. So there it all is. Uh, Excel basics drawing objects, six hours across two days. What matters is that you can see all the details and how they roll up and everything foots and ticks. So it's nice. Uh, why would you use it? Performance reviews, end of the year, you can go put on a filter, cut the data down to the past year and remind yourself, oh, I worked on this, this, and this. And then when you're running through what you accomplished for the year, you have all the details there. Or it's beyond the scope of this video, but in construction, you can go read the GitHub uh, training documents. In the construction industry, RS Means does just a phenomenal job of tracking how much it costs and how long it takes to do everything construction related. If you track some of these metrics yourself, if I wanted to go in, well, let's go run it here, do it by project. If I wondered for a course, well, how long is a statistics course at a graduate level take? Well, a three credit class takes 133 hours divided by the three credits that, and you can estimate, oh, a three credit class is going to take me this long and average them out, all out. And you can do the same thing for whatever the work you're doing is. As long as there's a little bit of repeatability, you start at a baseline of two or three or four tasks, you can start to use that to predict in the future. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the box to the right.